Hello, I'm Pat Harbison, and I'm here today with Wayne Wallace, and we're going to talk about the piece that he has recently completed on commission from B-Town Jazz for the B-Town Jazz Festival premiere. It'll be premiered at the B-Town Jazz Festival. And uh, so welcome, Wayne. Glad you're here. Hi, Pat. It's great to be back. It's settling in again. Actually, it's a lot calmer here in San Francisco. So Good. I'm kind of enjoying it. Right. This is the calm before the storm, yes, of course. Yes. But, well, um, so... We have a piece we're going to play, and I'm saying we because I'm fortunate to be in the ensemble that's going to play the piece that Wayne has recently completed. And uh, so th this piece is one of two pieces that was commissioned by the B-Town Jazz Organization uh, when last year's festival was postponed due to the pandemic. We uh, kind of as a collective uh, leadership group decided to spend some of the money on the homegrown hip online street series and then another portion it seemed that that also uh incidentally was roughly the time that the entire george, george floyd black lives matter uh, uh situation was escalating to perhaps its highest early peak and so we thought it would be very appropriate to take a certain amount of that money and uh, commission a work for this year's festival uh, works because we commissioned one group uh, for Greg Ward to write a piece for a nine piece band, a nonette, uh, and then one piece for you to write for a larger ensemble, if you will, a jazz big band. And uh, so, could you tell us uh, something about uh, how you were approached and what your charge was for the commission, what they asked you to do, et cetera? I, thought, I felt like when John Porter approached me, he wanted something that reflects what was going on at that time, Black Lives Matter movement. It's going to be hard to describe in history what that was like in the country. So I, I drew back to what was happening for me in 1968 and 1969. The Panthers were 1966, going forward. Bobby Kennedy, Martin Luther King are killed in 68. And I believe the riots at the convention was 68, 69? Mm -hmm. The whole world's watching. Yeah. Right, yeah, so it was about as tumultuous as it could get. But there were good things that happened. We also had the moonshot. Mm -hmm. And on the best on the baseball side, the Mets won the World Series. Mm -hmm. And there was Woodstock. And the Summer of Soul. And the Summer of Soul. So it was it was good and bad. It was like out of the turbulence there was growth and there was some common ground for people. Mm -hmm. I thought I always thought that one of the things that was misconstrued about the Black Panthers was their slogan power to the people. And it wasn't just power to black people. Mm -hmm. The American Indian Movement, Students for Democratic Society. And it got twisted. And, that, and I've, been, I've lived long enough. I watched the Black Lives Matter slogan. It was really wonderful because it echoed that. Yes. Because it was black, white, brown, everybody gay. And it, it was like, it was important for everyone. Mm -hmm. So I looked at it. And I just, to narrow it down, I looked at from reconstruction on up to what we went through in 2020 and we're still going through. And I tried to get the piece to represent the conflict. It starts off very sweetly, I'll just say that. Yes. And it ends without hope at the end. A little, just, the very last three notes are a discord just to show going forward. But in the middle of all of it, like the main theme is a seven, eight, eight, eight. So it just shows constant struggle going with the beginning of the pattern. Mm -hmm. um, I have the band members clapping at some points, kind of looking like how like 
the, the Gullah music was from South Carolina. Right, like it's padding Juba. Yeah, yeah, and Juba right. and all that. So yeah. it's not a direct thing, but you can see if you want to and, and imagine some of the discordance that went, it's been going on since, um, oh, I'd say 1853. Yeah. If you want, it, where was it? The Irish conscripted, conscripted into the uh, Civil War in 1861, 63. Yeah. So the whole gamut of what the movement has been going. Well, forward. you can even go back farther, like at the, at the precursor period of jazz, mm -hmm. a giant part of uh, Congo Square, mm -hmm. Louis, what's now Louis Armstrong Park in New Orleans, were the Haitian slaves who were free people, French-speaking people of color, right. who spoke the, the Creole patois and ended up in New Orleans. So right. that was some of the most directly African. Afro-Caribbean yeah. influences on jazz. It, it was in the zeitgeist then and and musically and the idea that it was about this struggle against oppression and classism and all that, you know. Yeah, that was what made this piece so difficult because there's so much material. Yes. I mean, the, the, the height of the Haitian Revolution was 1804. Mm -hmm. And then eventually you get the Black Codes and Code Noir in the 1860s, 1870s, 1880s. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the exact date. Yeah. But all of that goes hand in hand. It can't be separated. And you started having all these revolutions in the new world. Um, for our younger folks, the French were directly influenced by the American Revolutionary War for the French Revolution. Yes. Then that goes to Haiti and then to all the other countries that goes through Latin America. So I had way too much material. Oh yeah. But I, I narrowed it down as best I could. Yes, that's fantastic. Um, all original themes. Yes. You didn't yes. set any like traditional themes or mm -hmm. folk music, but mm -hmm. it's more the inspiration and perhaps some of the, the rhythmic influence is probably one of them. Knowing your music and your deeply steeped in, you know, Afro-Caribbean styles and, you know, jazz, Latin jazz, jazz Latin, I suspect there's going to be a strong presence of that rhythmic influence. Actually, no. No? I purposely didn't do that. Oh, cool. I did draw from sources, but I didn't go there. There's no percussionist on this. Okay. So it's just trap drums and the band and guitar. Um, gonna have some spoken word on it, I think. I've asked a couple of, um, well, I've asked one person in particular, I'm hoping she says yes, to come in and like to do some Zora Neale Thurston, James Baldwin, and do some quotes and some points to just kind of give a timeline for everything. Yes. What is it, Phyllis Wheatley was the first woman yes. to, to go ahead and write something down? Yeah. Uh, we'll find you know, W.E.B. Du Bois. I want to talk about the double consciousness because that's the thing from the uh, W.E.B. Du Bois that still permeates even through the Black Lives Matters movement with Mark and before that Marcus Garvey. Yeah. Too. It's, it's so much. I just, it, I have to really pick and choose how much gets put into the piece. That's fantastic. Uh, what's the, is it a conventional big band instrumentation? Yes. Mm -hmm. So just five. Four or five trumpets, four yeah. trombones, five saxophones. Yeah, soprano lead. Soprano lead, yeah. Uh, what else? Um, guitar plays an important part thematically. There's little themes and funny, there's some funny time things. Uh, the, the, se the seven foot eight against the eight eight, and then one of the spoken parts is going to be like three bar, three bar phrases of funk. But then the band plays four four against it as it goes forward. Uh -huh. Yeah, but it's it's not super complicated. Yeah. See, if you just go pam, 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 you're fine. Okay, okay. <laughs> because as is usual with jazz projects, if it's ambitious, they we're always going to be under rehearsed. Yes. In, but I, you know, when you have Clark Hunt is uh, Drive By Big Band is the core of the group that's playing this, and he has the. the stellar group of players so it ought to go together yeah. really well i'm looking forward to it very much yeah i kept that in mind i knew we would only have one rehearsal so we've already sent out the charts right the mp3s and all and it, 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 this is something if the audience wants to get inside of this no matter what happens the time never changes yeah the feel will change but the quarter note is always tank 
Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, the seven eighth thing is one and two and one two three one and two and one two three. Oh, yeah. So it goes like one and two and one two three. What? Oh, sorry. One and two and one two three. One and two and three and four and one two and one two three. Yeah. So it's, it's not really a big deal. Oh, cool. That'll be great. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward. To it. I am too. It's going to be fun. Well. Do you have any other thing you like to say in summation? Yeah, um, this is a perfect theme for me because growing up in the Bay Area, a couple of the members of the Black Panthers were in my church. Oh, heavy. And I was, if anybody wants to talk about this separate, it's fine because it's a long story. I was also there at San Francisco State during the riots with the SDA, SDS, Students for Democratic Society, and then in 1970, we had a face-to-face -face meeting with S.I. Hayakawa about the jazz program. And if folks don't know who S.I. Hayakawa is, look in the Duke Ellington book, Music is My Mistress. He was the dean of the music school, Little always wore a little Tam O'Shanter. Mm -hmm. uh, Chinese, I believe he was. Yes. Yeah. And, or Japanese, like, he's Japanese. Japanese. Yeah, Hayakawa was Japanese. And he was a big jazz fan. And John Handy was the only jazz musician at San Francisco State at that time. Naive, young, 18, 19 year old. We went up there demanding like the whole SDS thing. We need more jazz. We got to have it. And he just kind of sat there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was my beginning of moving towards that. That's crazy. That's great. Yeah. Well, no, I was I was there. Um, well, the Bay Area with the, the Panthers and yeah. Angela Davis and all that, that mm -hmm. was a giant one of the the big locations yeah. for yeah. the uh eruption of that a certain wing of the civil rights movement yes it which, was yes it which was which kind of comes across in the chicago seven movie yes it does, for yes, one it thing. does. yeah yeah that was interesting to see the chicago chapter knowing what was happening with the san francisco bay area chapter yes absolutely fantastic well i really look forward to uh, making music and, and exploring the piece and presenting it to the audience and thanks so much for talking to me. I really want to thank the, all the folks at B-Town Jazz for providing this platform, this needed platform for all of us. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm very happy to be a part of this project. Terrific. Thanks a lot. Oh, it's my pleasure.